Speaking of hacks, you may or may not know, I am not a big fan of break fasting early in the morning. Mm. I like to postpone the break fast. Yeah. And I agree with you that um, we really should have a savory break fast. What do you think of time-restricted eating as a, a piece of this puzzle? The same hack applies. Whatever time your break fast is, whether it's at 6 a.m. or 2 p.m., the first meal needs to be savory because after you've been fasting, your digestive system is very empty and anything you eat on that empty stomach is going to go right through to your bloodstream. So whatever time that is, you should do it. You should do a savory uh, first meal. In terms of the time-restricted eating, I think we've seen a bit of a swing back. There was a huge, huge, huge push for it a few years ago. Now people are understanding that it might not be always the best thing to do. We have to remember it is a stressor on the body. So if you're a female and it's a particular time of the month where it's difficult and you work out and you have a stressful job and your kids and cold plunge and sauna and la 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 maybe also fasting 18 hours a day is not necessary for your body it can be a lot of stress i love doing fasting when i'm on vacation for example mm. and i'm mm -hmm. kind of chilling and i'm like oh i'm gonna do that little hormetic stress on my body because it's gonna feel good but i don't think you need to do it in order to be healthy it's a tool to use if it feels good to you but it's to me it's not a requirement it's more important to eat three times a day in a really healthy good for you glucose way than eating only for six hours a day but eating a lot of crap you see what i mean I'm impressed with the data that came out of the NIH a few years ago. There were two competing studies of calorie restriction in rhesus monkeys out of the University of Wisconsin and the NIH. And they showed that calorie restriction definitely improved health span, but only one of the two studies showed increased lifespan. Mm. And a researcher at the NIH said, you know, when we're controlling what animals eat, we're putting out food on a, on a controlled basis. And I think the reason the, these animals do well is because when you're calorie restricted, you're really hungry. And so yeah. when the food comes out once a day, you eat it very quickly. And so they're fasting much longer. So he decided to do this in rats. One bunch of rats got fairly high sugar diet. The other bunch of rats got a fairly high protein diet. But both groups of rats, they controlled the time of eating. Mm. And it was about, for some of these rats, it was about a two hour window of eating. Long story short, in this study, it didn't matter whether they ate sugar or protein, wow. it mattered how time restricted they were in terms of longevity. Interesting. Interesting. I think one thing we can learn for sure is that if, if you take some of this information and apply it on a very basic level, for example, snacking between meals should be avoided. It's always better to have, you know, three meals a day than six meals a day, for example. But then how far do we apply this? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting ongoing experiment. I right. Guess. Yeah. I write about the Italian cyclist study where they were put on a training table where they every, everybody had to eat the same thing for three months. Okay. One group had a 12-hour eating window yeah. where they ate breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning, lunch at 1 o'clock, and had to finish dinner at 8 o'clock, 12-hour eating window. The other group had a 7-hour eating window, <laughs> kept the calories the same, the training was the same, everything was the same. Only the 7-hour window group lost weight. And what impressed me is their insulin-like growth factor, one, dropped, the other group didn't. I spend my career getting people's insulin-like growth factor one lower as they age. Yeah. Nothing wrong with insulin growth factor when you're 30. Yeah. Um, but when you're old, whatever that means, uh, you want to get it lower. And have you found any studies on this in females? Because I know a lot of stuff has been done in males in terms of time-restricted feeding. I think the problem, again, with females is that, well, our energy sensor is mTOR, and you're blessed with a more sensitive mTOR sensor than men because mm -hmm. you're actually designed to carry enough fat to bring a baby to term if the day you get pregnant, uh, there's a famine and you're not going to eat. Yeah. And I think we, we ignore that too much, particularly in females. I take care of a few female Olympians. 
and they are very thin yeah. and they have very regular periods or none at all. Mm. And one of them in particular wanted to get pregnant and I forced her to gain 10 pounds. Yeah. And lo and behold, she got pregnant. Yeah. I think you guys, your biology is designed to reward you for having some extra body fat yeah. stores, right? Absolutely. I don't think we all have to go back to the Rubenesque mm -hmm. figure. Uh, but you know, the, the, the earth mother figure of ancient cultures is a very robust looking yeah. female. And I totally. think there was a reason for that. Mm -hmm. But the obsession with with thinness in females, and you know, we've been blasted with messages from yeah. the day we're born. Basically, it's so toxic. It's so difficult. It's really, yeah. We need to change this. And I think the just the obsession with losing five pounds, losing five pounds before the summer. Wow, what a way to control women to make them obsessed with you know going from thin to extra thin. It's just unnecessary. So, what do you think about? Um Fake sugars. I mean, no, <laughs> no calorie yeah, sweeteners. Yeah, no glucose spikes. Yeah. Listen, it's always okay. So, so many things to say about this, and so much controversy these days about aspartame, etc. Sweeteners. There's a spectrum of them. Some of them seem to be better for our health than others. That being said, even if you look at the quote unquote war sweeteners. I believe they're still going to be better for you than regular sugar. So I, I would never tell somebody who drinks Diet Coke to start drinking regular Coke because it's natural and it's better for them. <laughs> no, but you laugh. But the problem is with all this demonization of sweeteners, a lot of people are doing that. They're like, oh, aspartame is going to give me cancer. Therefore, I should drink Coke with real sugar. So I really want to help people avoid that change. We should not go from a, you know, a sweetener to real sugar. That being said, should you try to avoid sweeteners? Yeah, why not?